All right, uh, WWE Raw. Let's get into it. Uh, big, big moment at the end. Um, but just a couple of other notes. We're not going to go like beat by beat for this whole thing. Um, I have loved this last part of the CM Punk Drew McIntyre build. I get some people didn't like the the, the bracelet stuff. I thought. For as cheesy as it was, they played it up very well, and I, I think both characters act believably around it, and so that has really, I, I think, done a good job of getting us to this point. And now that they are at this point, they are hitting it out of the park. Um, they have, I think, conveyed the seriousness and shown proper hesitancy while also being confident and kind of feeling like they have to do this. Both guys have said, my families don't want me to do this. CM Punk was like, I probably don't even have another Hell in the Cell match in me. Drew McIntyre saying like, I, I have had back injuries. Uh, he didn't say that directly, but I, I have had injuries there that have never been fixed, which apparently is true. So they have... They have done a good job of really driving home how serious this is, how this makes no sense for them, but they have to do it because that guy is standing over there and this is the only way that we can end this thing is by me beating him or by me figuring out that I can't beat him in this thing. But this is the only place for this to end even though it is not where I want to be. And I think that this has really really gotten over the seriousness of the structure in a very incredible way. And I, I have loved it. I love that it feels a little bit more organic, even though we all kind of figured Bad Blood, um, this, you know, Hell in a Cell was born at Bad Blood. Um, and this is also just kind of the time when Hell in a Cell was happening anyway. But because it's not called Hell in a Cell, it doesn't feel as forced. And it just, it feels more legitimate and it feels very serious. And it feels like, oh, this is the only way that this could, um, this was the only way that this could finish is by Hell in a Cell. And it's not just, oh, this popped up. Uh, Braun Strowman against Bronson Reed. This might be the feud of the year. These guys have been unbelievable in just wild, chaotic, car crash, literally and figuratively, uh, television all throughout this feud. It's been amazing. And now last monster standing. I would imagine we get the ring exploding on Monday. Um, that That's a whole lot of fun. Um, but th this, it's just, it has been some good old fashioned fun in the WWE. And then how can you not be happy for Jey Uso? Him getting the Intercontinental Championship, that reaction, massive. You want to talk about like getting over and being made. L Monday night, that was it. He was 100% that in this. It was a phenomenal performance. And um, the, the crowd fully into it. I, like, the match itself, it, it was fun. It was good. Um, it was surprising to, to have him take the belt off of Braun Breaker. Um, I, I kind of thought Braun was settling in for a really long title run. But I also don't think that this knocks Braun Breaker down any, right? Like, I, I think that he is now kind of established as a, a real, like, ass kicker type of a guy. And I, I think they have done a good job of legitimizing him. And there's going to be a rematch here. But I do think also... If now Jay kind of gets caught up in this swirling storm heading towards Vancouver of uh, war games and the Roman Reigns stuff, I think this also kind of ties in to what Cody was talking about when they did the thing at where Georgia Tech plays football, um, where Cody was like, hey, there's a tribal chief. It's not you. There's a WWE champion. It's not you. And now you can also say like, hey, Jay is main event Jey Uso without you. And he won his first singles title without you. And so there's all of these things that I think you can get kind of excited about and um, build this up in that type of a storyline and I think make it very impactful. And so I, I think it match it, it fits into that one as well. But overall, the Intercontinental title picture is so fun. I have really liked how they've done it on Raw. Um, I, I've said before, like one of my main issues for the last little bit was like everything built up to WrestleMania perfectly. But it felt like everything had to finish at WrestleMania, right? And I get that it is, it's the new, it's the new season out of WrestleMania. And so it's the season finale, but it was just like, oh, well, we can't, Gunther can only 
lose the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania. Well, Roman Reigns, like, he can only lose the belt at WrestleMania. Cody can only win the belt at WrestleMania. Sammy can only win the Intercontinental title at, at WrestleMania. How, what, are you going to take him off of it at somewhere else? No, not a chance. Can't do that. Uh, like, all these different things, there was but one place that it could happen, and that was WrestleMania. And so I like that they've kind of gotten away from that formula now. Have it be on a random Raw on a Monday night in wherever the fuck they were, Ontario, California. Um, Have the... Like, I don't think you need to have world title changes, but at Bad Blood, maybe we get a women's title change. Like, it doesn't all have to be just WrestleMania or just SummerSlam for, for title changes to, to, to happen. And so I hope this is a bit more of a sign of things to come. Like, you, you still have to have special things for those big shows, but it doesn't all just have to be, well, this guy got beat for the first time, this guy got beat for the first time, this guy lost the title, this guy lost the title, this guy lost the title. Every big moment just happened at WrestleMania. Uh, and the rest of the year, you don't really have to pay attention to. Um, I think they've done a, good, done a good job right that. But like I said, overall, the IC title picture is really strong right now. And building off of um, that tree from WrestleMania, like we talked about, Gunther reestablishes the prestige of the Intercontinental Championship. And from that, Sami Zayn, who maybe they dropped the ball on, um, his post-WrestleMania win with Kevin Owens against the Usos at WrestleMania 39 was not the strongest, but they rehabilitated him and got him back into a upper mid-card toward the main event status with that Intercontinental Championship win. From there, um, Gunther spins off to the title picture, and he's been excellent, um, and now is the champion. Um, the Sami Zayn part of this, I guess, Intercontinental title tree, Sami Zayn goes off and feuds with Chad Gable, legitimizing Chad Gable with a couple of amazing matches and a really good heel turn against uh, Sami Zayn out in Montreal. Um, from there, Sami and Jey Uso kind of, you know, build that relationship back up, while Chad Gable elevates now the awfully named American Maid, or whatever it is. Um, but now he's in a feud with the Wyatt Six, and that feels like a bigger thing. So we've now elevated a couple of things, and then Sami Zayn goes into a feud with Braun Breaker, and because still the Intercontinental title feels important, Braun Breaker winning it eventually feels important. And so he gets elevated in this whole thing, and now you have Jay. But also, Braun Breaker, that Fatal 4-Way here in Calgary, where Braun is going around and talking shit to every person in that Fatal 4-Way, made him feel like the asshole bully jock in high school, um, but also gave him a bit of a swagger and a bit of an air to him that was really, really great. And I think, again, elevates him, and it made everyone else in that feel like, okay, there is something going on with him and this guy, and that's what this is going to be. So they have done a great job of going from the Gunther run to now building up a number of these guys to the point where Sami Zayn um, eventually is going to get a title shot and is going to legitimately feel like he could potentially be a threat um, for that title. So I think they've done um, uh, some really great work over there on Monday Night Raw. SmackDown's been a little blah lately, for sure. 